It's NASA's most powerful rocket ever, and it's got some problems right now. You're taking a live look from Launchpad 39B at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. We're learning that NASA is working on multiple issues that could prevent the launch this morning. Earlier this morning, we told you about a fuel leak that has been fixed. Now there are other issues, including a crack on an inner fuel tank that was just discovered minutes ago by engineers. Mm. Now NASA officials are now saying a launch at the start of the launch window seems unlikely. Now the window opens up at 7:33 our time. It runs for a few hours, so there is time to work out the issues and get Artemis off of the ground. But unfortunately, it is not looking good. Now the 322 foot rocket is not carrying any astronauts. This is a test flight that will go into a lunar mm -hmm. orbit around the moon and then splash down in the Pacific 42 days from now. If it all goes well, it kicks off NASA's plan to get people back on the moon in just the next few years, maybe even beyond the moon. Reporter Skylar Henry has the story from Kennedy Space Center. The countdown was on for NASA's new moon rocket until a hydrogen leak this morning slowed things down. The issue appeared in the same area during a dress rehearsal in the spring. Jeremy Parsons is on the team in charge of sending the rocket and Orion capsule on a more than one month journey. I've always wanted to be a part of going back to the moon and this is that first big step. The $4 billion unpiloted mission is a bit of a test run going beyond the far side of the moon before returning to Earth's orbit splashing into the Pacific traveling a total of more than 1.3 million miles. But you're testing it to its limits to make sure that these things are capable to do what y'all are designing it to do? At every level, right down to the smallest piece, we test, we test, we test again. Then when we've integrated it together, we test once more. The mission kicks off NASA's hope of getting people back on the moon to its South Pole as early as 2025. When you build a spacecraft, you can't take any chances, certainly not when you're building a human-rated spacecraft. Setting the stage for future human exploration into deep space and possibly a landing on Mars. Skyler Henry, CBS News at the Kennedy Space Center. And we're, of course, bringing in Scott to talk about the launch. A lot depending on the weather. So they sure. stopped this countdown clock, and I think everyone went, oh, no, mm -hmm. but this happened last night. Too. Yeah, it happened last night. And the problem with stopping the countdown clock is at the scheduled opening of the window, okay. 7.33 our time, 80% chance of favorable weather. You get an hour into that window for to fix these problems mm -hmm. like this, and that chance comes down to 60%. Oh, no. So we're dealing okay. with mechanical issues, and then weather will become a concern. Weather has been a concern. In fact, uh, they've been planning on some lightning mm -hmm. Officials confirmed five different lightning strikes hit the 600 foot towers that surround the Artemis rocket on Saturday. Now, those towers, they're literally made to absorb those lightning strikes. They thankfully weren't powerful enough to cause any major issues. The good news is uh, that weather launch window 80% at 733. But if they don't, if they don't get it pretty quick, pretty early on, mm. you know, they're going to be looking at some other concerns. I just saw that they've launched about four weather balloons in the last hour, uh, just to get an update mm -hmm. on on weather conditions there around the launch site. Well, you can imagine the tension in the room, the launch oh, room man. from the technical part of it. Just everyone on standby. <laughs> That's your job this morning. Waiting and waiting. Hey, I, I'll get to your bus stop forecast, but count me <laughs> yeah, out when exactly. it comes to that well, rocket forecast. These pictures you're looking at now in the video too. It's been 53 years since an astronaut literally set foot on the moon. It was July 20th, 1969, when Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin took man's first steps on that moon. But thanks to Artemis, the capsules will eventually put the first woman and the first person of color onto the lunar surface. Mm, so exciting. Remember, you can watch the hopeful launch again, hopeful right now, if it does happen right here on THV 11. We'll be airing the CBS News special report, which is still scheduled to begin at 730 our time during CBS mornings. Now they'll have expert analysis and minute by minute coverage of the launch window.